is there is no evidence that you will find anywhere that demonstrates that lives are saved, there's a lower mortality by in your proximity from an A&E. What it impacts your survival it is how, having a good general practice. Now, I understand that. What's been interesting about what's been brought up, both in maternity mm -hmm. and also in A&E, is that maybe saving those extra marginal lives is not the most important thing. It may be that if you're old and frail and you've got no car, actually going to a slightly less good place nearer by suits you better and taking the risk than going to the you know, better life-saving, more life-saving <coughs> hub somewhere quite a long way. But that's why we're keeping the local hospitals on each of those sites. <coughs> the vast majority of things people go to hospital for, their outpatients, their diagnostics, will still be local. The only time they have to travel further is if they're being admitted to hospital, which is a small part of what hospitals do. We heard a statistic earlier today just to remind us, I was there, John Lester has a question for you, but um, I think it was 70% of the people who were going to one of these inverted commas downgraded ANEs would have gone there anyway. It's, it's the top slice of critically ill, uh, very tricky horses who have blue light largely that end up where in the more sophisticated ANEs. If I recall that correctly? Roughly speaking, yes. Yeah. So 70% are being managed in the urgent care centre of the 30% where they would have gone anyway. Yeah. The 30% yeah. behind half of those are blue lights, half are people who get there themselves, but not necessarily do that. I see. John, do you have a quick question?